In this video, we're gonna add checkpoints and respawning to the game. So, let's go. Let's start off with some housekeeping. First of all, let's delete the saw object and the health collectible. Then let's create a new object, call it core and reset its position. Now let's take the main camera, the UI canvas, the sound manager and the loading manager and let's drag them into the core object. Now let's create another empty object and call it player. I'm gonna use all caps and also add some equal signs to make it more visible in the hierarchy. Then let's drag it above the player object in the hierarchy and reset its position. And finally create another object, use the same format but call it level this time. Now I'm gonna drag it above the level object and reset the position. So just to explain, none of what we did was absolutely necessary, it's just a personal preference. But let's see what happens when we start working with individual objects. You'll see that the hierarchy will get cluttered very very quickly. But the player and level object kinda helps us split all the objects into categories, making it a bit easier to manage. Alright, that's it for this part. Now let's get on to the real thing, which is creating a checkpoint. The first thing that we need to do here is find the checkpoint sprite. So let's type in checkpoint inside the search box and open the first folder that you see. The third sprite in this folder is called checkpoint no flag and this is the one that we'll use, so drag it into the hierarchy. Now in order to see the sprite we need to change the sorting layer to foreground, as we usually do. Once you've done that you can start playing around the scale. I found that the value of 5 looks great for me. Then I positioned the checkpoint object right in the middle of the room and renamed it to just checkpoint. Right, now that we have the object ready, we need to add a box collider 2D component to it to be able to detect collisions. Once you've done that, make sure to make it a trigger and edit the size of the collider. Great, the next step will be to add an animator component to this object because we want to animate the flag. And immediately after that, let's go into the animation folder and create another folder called checkpoint. In here we're gonna create an animator controller with the same name and attach it to the checkpoint object. You might have noticed that in this case I created an animator override controller, but this was simply by accident. A normal animator controller will work perfectly fine as well in this case. Great, the next step will be to open the animation window and if you don't have it, follow the same steps as I did to add it to your layout. Now select the checkpoint object and press create in the animation window. The first animation that we're gonna create is gonna be called checkpoint underscore idle. Great, now let's press the red record button, open the sprite window on the sprite renderer, select another sprite and then go back to the one that we had initially. When you're done let's create another animation and let's call this one checkpoint appear. Now we could change all the sprites manually, but let's try a more efficient approach this time. So let's take the animation window and drag it up so it's separated. So let's go back into the folder where we have all the checkpoint sprites and drag them up into the animation window. Now you should see all the frames inside the animation window. So let's select all of them and extend them until the animation takes roughly about 1 second. If you press play now, you'll see the checkpoint flag appear. Now if we want to make this animation work, we need to create a transition. So for this, let's open the animator window. In here you should see both the animations that we created, so checkpoint idle and checkpoint appear. Now we need to create a new trigger parameter and we'll call it appear. Once you have that, let's right click the checkpoint idle state and create a transition to the appear animation. Now we'll set the condition to be the appear trigger, obviously, and next up open the settings. Now let's set the exit time to 0, the transition duration to 0 as well and disable the has exit time parameter. Alright, once you have that done, let's select the checkpoint object, create a new tag for it called checkpoint and assign this tag to the object. Great, we're done with the checkpoints, now let's move on to respawning the player. 
Now let's open the scripts folder, go inside the player folder and create a new script called player respawn. Now we need to open the player prefab and attach the newly created script to it. Inside the script we'll need three variables. The first one will be an audio clip that we will play every time when we pick up a new checkpoint. The second one will be a private transform that will hold a reference to our latest checkpoint. And the last one will be a reference to the player health, because we will need to reset the player health when he respawns. Right away we'll make an awake method and grab the reference to the player health using get component. Next up we'll create a public void called respawn. And inside this function we'll do three things. First up we're gonna move the player to the checkpoint position. The second thing that we need to do is restore the player health and reset the animation. This is why we created the player health variable. So to make this work, let's go back into Unity, select the player and open the health script. Once you're in, we're gonna create another public void called respawn inside this script as well. You can position it wherever you like, I just chose to add it after the add health function. First and foremost, this method needs to reset the player's health. So we're gonna say add health and pass in the starting health variable. Next up, we need to get the player out of the death animation. That's why we're gonna reset the die trigger on the player's animator. And if you're wondering what reset trigger does, well, it basically makes sure that the trigger inside the animator is not active. Right, next up we want to play the idle animation and we're gonna do that by typing anim.play and pass in the name of the animation. Important note here, to make sure that this works you need to go back into Unity, open the player's animator and copy the name of the animation exactly. In my case for example idle was spelled with a capital I. If I didn't catch that it wouldn't have worked. Now this next step is not mandatory but I think we can improve the player experience by giving them invulnerability after they respawn. If you feel the same way, then just type in start coroutine and vulnerability. If you don't, just skip this line. Moving forward, I want you to pay attention to this part. If you remember, we used it to deactivate all the components related to player movement, attacking, etc. Now we need to re-enable them. So copy this part, paste it inside the respawn method and change false to true. The last stroke here is changing the dead variable to false, because the player is not dead anymore. Alright, next up let's go back into the player respawn script and call the method that we just created by typing in player health.respawn. The third thing that we need to do in here is move the camera back to the checkpoint room and we're doing this for one specific reason. Let's consider the scenario where the player picks up a checkpoint in one room but then goes on to die in another one. In this case the camera will be focused on the room where the player died in but the actual player will be respawned in the previous room. This means that the player will be off screen as soon as he respawns, which is gonna create a problem for the players. This is why we have to implement this feature. And to do this we have to access the main camera, grab the camera controller component on it and call the move to new room function. To make this function work we have to pass in the transform of the room where the checkpoint is located. So we're gonna pass in the current checkpoint parent and make sure that in the hierarchy the checkpoint object is placed as a child of the room object. There's one mistake in the code that you see right now and that's the fact that I should have passed in the current checkpoint.parent instead of the transform.parent. But we're gonna fix this small mistake in a couple minutes. Other than this we have a fully functional respawn system so we can move on to the next step. Currently we have no way to test our respawn system because we have no code that allows us to activate checkpoints. So let's change that right now. Our first step here will be to add an onTriggerEnter2D method to the player respawn script. In here we're gonna check if the object that we collided with has a checkpoint tag. And if it does we're gonna say that the current checkpoint equals to the collision.transform. So we're basically saving the checkpoint that we collided with as the current checkpoint. Next up we're gonna use the sound manager to play the checkpoint sound. I think this is self-explanatory. 
Right after this we want to disable the collider of the checkpoint. We're gonna do this by saying collision.getComponentCollider.enabled equals false. Now we never used the collider class before in this series and if you're wondering what it does it's basically a base class of all the colliders. So when you're typing in collider the code will automatically grab whatever collider is attached to the object. Now an interesting note here is that collider only works with 3D colliders, which is not the case for us. What I should have used instead is Collider 2D, which includes all the types of 2D colliders. I could have edited the mistake out or left a message like I usually do, but I decided to leave this mistake in because I think this information might be valuable to some of you. Alright, let's keep going. You can change the Collider class into Collider 2D right now or just wait literally 30 seconds until we do it together. Now we disable the collider on the checkpoint so we cannot interact with it again. What we need to do now is give the player some visual feedback that the checkpoint has been activated. And we're gonna do that by grabbing the animator component and triggering the appear animation. Once you've done that, let's make sure that the collider class is changed to collider 2D and we should be good to go. Now let's go back into Unity, select the checkpoint object, open the animator window and double check if the trigger name matches the name in the code. The next step is to make sure that the checkpoint is parented directly to a room object. In my case the checkpoint is positioned in room 1 so I'm gonna drag it into room 1. Also let's double check if the checkpoint has the correct tag and if the box collider 2D on it is a trigger. Alright, now let's add some traps so we can actually kill the player so we can see if this all works. I'm gonna put an arrow trap inside room 1, place it on the ceiling, then go into room 2 and activate the traps that I have in here because I wanna test how dying works in both rooms. Next up, to make sure that the checkpoint animation works properly, let's select the checkpoint object, open the animator component, double click on the checkpoint appear animation and disable the loop time. If you don't do this, the appear animation will play continuously when you trigger the checkpoint and it will just look like a bug. Alright, next up let's open the prefabs collectibles folder and drag the checkpoint object in there for future use. Then we also have to open the player prefab and assign the checkpoint sound. I have a sound effect specifically for this purpose and it sounds like this. If you like it the link will be in the description and if you don't feel free to replace it with your own. Just make sure that you don't forget to drag it into the checkpoint sound field. Now let's open the animation window, select the player object and select the die animation. We're gonna make the player respawn right after he dies. So let's select the last frame of the animation and create an animation event. Now in the top right corner you can select a function for this event. So we will select respawn. And because I want a small delay before the respawn happens, I'm gonna take the event and drag it a bit further in, specifically to one second. We're almost there. One last thing that we need to do is we need to go back to the player respawn script and change transform.parent to current checkpoint.parent because we need to move the camera to the room object, which is the parent of the checkpoint, not the player. Great, now we can hit play and see if this works properly. As you can see, if the player dies in the first room, the respawn works correctly. But let's also see what happens when we die in the second room. As expected, the player respawns properly and the camera has moved to the correct spot as well. That's it for this episode. If this video helped you and if you want to see more in the future, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Finally, I want to thank all the Patreon supporters and all the viewers in general. You guys are amazing. Stay safe and keep making games.